Hello and welcome to Define Your Success, a podcast hosted by me, Abigail Erosaru, Olympian, Olympic long jump athlete, and I am here today having a conversation about the athlete experience with none other than nine-time British champion, Naomi Metzger, nay Ogbetta. I definitely was about to say Ogbetta and then I was like, no, 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 no. (laughs) She's recently married. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited to chat with you and yeah, just talk about my athlete experience. Just for listeners, the reason that I have you on this podcast is because I am really interested in sharing the holistic athlete experience because we see it from the idea of oh yeah, this athlete's running on a track, this athlete is jumping into a sand pit. What's their nutrition like? What is their mindset like? What are all these other things like? All specifically focused on the athlete. But the athlete, we are human as well. So I want to see the multiplicity of all of that. Don't even know whether that word is relevant to what I've just said to that sentence. But you know, I just want to see that we are more than just an athlete. And so I actually have brought you on to talk about everything that you do beyond track and field. So conversations around nfts people are thinking what is that uh <laughs> ethereum crypto uh well what, what else like, you know your three your three point star the agency your photography you're just doing so so much and so i'm so excited for us to hear more on that so i'm going to stop talking and i'm going to ask you about your actual athlete on the track experience can you just give us a bit of a summary Yep, so I'm a triple jumper, I'm the nine times British champion, European junior medalist, and I've been jumping now probably 10 years, Um, I'm 23 years old, and yeah, that's kind of me as an athlete, Um, but yeah, you're right, I feel like when I think of who I am, um, I think of myself so much more, and I barely even see myself as an athlete, like I know that's what I do, but I don't really see that as who I am. Um, but I know that I am talented at it um, and I enjoy it so that's kind of the reason why I continue to do athletics is because I enjoy the sport I want to inspire others um, and I'm good at it Um, but aside from that I do so many other things which I'm I'm really it is really refreshing to talk about that so really looking forward to that. Wow there's even there I'm just like what question do I ask next? Well (laughs) you started with you, you mentioned a little bit about around identity really and I if you could place a label, I appreciate we don't like these labels. We don't like to say, oh, I'm an athlete, I'm this and that. But let's just do that. What are your top, maybe let's say five labels? Um, I'm a Christian. I'm an athlete. I'm a wife. <laughs> I'm a creative. And I am a... Hmm, that last one. It's always a fifth one. If you said six, I would have got all five. <laughs> It's true. I just say I'm a human. I'm a human. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. And I really want to dive straight into your creative side. So can you share with me about NFT, how you got into that, what it even is for those people who don't know what <laughs> NFT stands for, non-fungible tokens, I believe. And yeah, just, just share, please. Yeah. So I came across um, NFTs maybe the same way other people did seeing random articles about these apes that are selling for millions of dollars or these pixels that are selling for ridiculous amounts of money um, and I came across it from a TikTok of um, there's an entrepreneur called Gary V and he was talking again about these apes and these ape NFTs and why you need to invest in it and I was like what on earth is this and why would somebody want to buy a picture of a cartoon animal and why is it making millions like this makes no sense but I'm very intrigued um, and because I studied graphic design um, as a GCSE, I was like, okay, let's see. I, I know how to use Photoshop. I know how to use Illustrator. Um, can I get into this NFT space? Um, so I kind of held it off for a little bit. And then I saw another video on TikTok of a girl who said she made the NFT as a joke, but then decided to sell. And I was like, hmm, okay. Well, I'm not sponsored at the moment. If there's another way I can make a stream of income, you know, if even if it doesn't make sense to me right now, let me just give it a go. So when I was in Dubai, my husband got COVID and I had to isolate. So obviously when you're isolating, it can get very boring. So I started to really look into crypto, into NFTs, um, and I decided, you know, I want to make one. So the way I sort of went about it was first buying cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency is just like 
normal money, but it is in this thing called, um, yeah, like Web3, I guess it's called. It's, it, Web3 is just where you can own um, the things that you put online. And cryptocurrency is this online currency, which um, isn't sort of maintained by banks. It's kind of not really governed. If you can kind of read more into that, it's hard to explain. Um, but yeah, I decided I was going to create my own NFT and it's called Afro Chicks. And so far I've made about close to $4,000 um in the past month <laughs> on, on doing these nfts so it's been an incredible journey i know i've said a lot there <laughs> but yeah that's kind of what i've been doing um, in the nft space thank you so much for being really really honest and clear in that explanation of like what you're doing how you got into that and actually even putting a number a figure on what you're earning because i feel like people are so closed around that but if you can share and if you can share from like your passion, the thing that you are doing it and, and it's not as well. Okay, let me, uh, there's so much here, but it's not like you knew what you were doing from the start. You went away, you did the research, you took time and then you realize, okay, this is something that I can play around with. And you have a handle on, on Twitter where you actually, what's it called? Af Afro Chicks and Afro Chicks NF NFT, yeah. I will obviously include that link in the description. But what I love about that is it's not just you sharing your content in terms of, hey, buy my NFTs. It's also you sharing the process, getting other people on board because you're clearly so passionate about this. You've literally been doing this. We are recording this on the 10th of March. And I know that we had a conversation at the end of January. And at that point, you just really started and you'd said, I, I, you, I've sold four. You were like, I've sold four. <laughs> and now you're <laughs> laughing because you're like, I mean, how many have you sold now? <laughs> One month <laughs> down the line. I think about 70 now. <laughs> right? Yeah. And guys, in all honesty, so I do have cryptocurrency. And when you told me about this NFT, I, I just, I start things and then I'm like, oh, let me have a gander at this. So I, was, I had to even tri try and figure out how to log on to Coinbase again, what, what my password was, all of these things. <laughs> and then be like, oh, let me try and buy one of her products. And the one that I wanted or somebody already had. And then I was trying to figure all these things out. So I will <laughs> at some point have one of your items and I would encourage others to also check out Afro Chicks NFT because hey, it's an exciting market, it's growing. And, and so for those people who are like me, okay, the benefit of this conversation is kind of like educational as well for those athletes who want to add an additional stream of income or for any person actually who's thinking, hey, I'm pretty creative. I would define myself as a creative as well. How would they get involved? How would they get started? Because I know you've mentioned, hey, it's not just about, it's not just about the art, there's more to it as well. So can you share that side of things? Yeah, so basically anything can be an NFT. It could be music, it'd be, it could be poetry, it could be artwork like what I do. Um, but I think the main way to get into it is find a community, it's mainly on Twitter where I see uh, you know a lot of um, people who are into NFTs. Um, try and find a community into something that you're into. So maybe you could type in photography NFT or you could type in music NFT and there'll just be you know thousands of accounts that will come up. Following a couple of them will just sort of get you in the loop of the newest um, NFTs which are coming out, the new communities, the new discords to join. Discord is an app where you can sort of chat to people um, in the space and know when the next um, NFT is dropping and coming out. Um, so there's just so much information for free um, on the internet, which is what I've absolutely loved. Um, even today, I came across a problem with a customer who tried to buy um, an NFT, um, but it didn't work. And I could literally message somebody who I've never met, I would follow on Twitter and be like, hey, can you um, help me out? Because I know nothing about the back end of cryptocurrencies and smart contracts. So could you tell me? And the issue was resolved. So the community is really friendly, really helpful. Um, and yeah, I'm really new to it. But I'd say um, finding the community is the best way to start. I like that. And actually, it's something as I was preparing this community was one of those uh, points that I'd, I'd put down on my notes. Because again, this is something I recognize through what you're sharing on Twitter. So you host Twitter spaces. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so 
there's within the NFT space, it's kind it was kind of dominated by the, the typical sort of males, um, a lot of white males at that. And as a black female, I really wanted to see more representation of women and also black women, because even in the tech space, there's a really small percentage of black women in that space. So I reached out to a large um, Twitter account called Women in NFTs and said, hey, like, would it be possible if I could host a space um, celebrating black women um, in this uh, NFT world? And she was like, yeah, she just kind of took a chance. Like she didn't even know that I could talk or present or anything. Um, but we did it and I, I think I had about 350 people come onto that um, space. I had about, you know, at least 20 women come in and share um, their stories. Um, and it was just like an incredible um, sort of ex experience. So since then, we've kind of agreed that I'll do it weekly and I'll host these weekly spaces celebrating um, you know, like black people and black women in, in the, um, the NFT space. So that's kind of how that came about. Wow. <laughs> first and foremost I'm so impressed by that number 300 over 350 people attending that first Twitter space it shows you that people are interested it shows you that people are keen to onboard and and learn more about this thing that is relatively new I remember when we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago when you first spoke to me about the NFTs and I was just I was saying how this is such a small space. I can't remember the actual percentage or the number that of people that actually own NFTs, but it is ridiculously small. And so when people are worried about maybe being too late to the party, it's not too late, right? <laughs> Definitely not. It's still super early. Um, yeah. Yesterday as well, I like woke up to a crazy notification because um, Randy Zuckerberg, who's Mark Zuckerberg's sister, um, she purchased an Afro chick and shouted it out. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, Can I scream right now? Oh my gosh. Okay, this is crazy. Yeah, this is blowing up. I need to buy one like today. Guys, if you're listening to this and you've not bought an Afro chick NFT, please note, you need to buy it because yeah, this is wild. Also, oh my goodness. I'm a bit speechless. I need to stop talking. This is wild. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> that's major <laughs> oh goodness where do we go from here let me just um wind it down a little bit and just reset abs let's reset because this I'm just getting excited this is why I wanted to have this conversation because I feel it's exciting I love that you can have these two passions or these various passions running concurrently like yes you're you're passionate about being a high performing athlete yes you have really large goals, Commonwealth Games, I'm sure coming up this year, world championships, jumping beyond 14 meters, consistently getting into those. I'm just speaking that over your life right now because I already know that that's what you're working towards. And we all know that because we can see that talent. But again, it's that idea of like, what else? Who else is Naomi Metzger? Like, what else do you do? And like, I love that you define yourself as a creative. But as you were speaking about creating this space and these forums for black women who to get into tech and then to get into this specific area of tech that, with nfts what i thought i just wrote down trailblazer because that's exactly what you're doing and people can look in, look at what you're doing as a 23 year old young black female and think wow if she's doing it why can't i and so for me i just want to gush and say how proud and excited i am for you Thank you. Moving on from NFTs, although I actually wanted to just um, quickly put a bit of a definition around that from what I understand NFTs to be from your explanation. In fact, can you define NFTs the way that you would define it when we first had that conversation a couple of weeks ago, please? Um, so NFTs are non-fungible tokens. So the data sort of within that NFT, so it can't be changed and every single thing, every single transaction is confirmed on the blockchain. So it can't be altered. And um, yeah, I think it's just a way of really owning something because as I said, it can't be altered. So once you own it, unless you sign it um, and that contract is made, um, it's yours. So I think um, it's just a really secure way of, of owning content. Thank you. I feel like we've covered so much on NFTs, but I want to cover the other aspects of your creative side. And then I just want to ask a couple of just one or two more questions around the um, the challenges around balancing 
all these different activities that you're doing. So let's cover three point start and maybe any other aspects of aside from sport that you do, like more, being more than an athlete that I'm maybe not aware of. Yeah, so um, with Three Point Start, that is um, like a blog website, which I created in lockdown. Um, and the aim of it is to create, um, is to co- collaborate with other creatives like myself and interview athletes from across different sports and really get athletes to own their own narrative and tell stories about themselves away from the sport that they do. So for example, we did one called class, a series called Class of 2020, um, speaking to different athletes who just recently graduated and talking about what their dissertation was on. Um, we'd also interviewed footballers, um, you know, all, all different, you know, types of topics. And I just really wanted to have ownership because so many times as an athlete, you get articles written about you, which you may not agree with. They may not be true, especially for my brother as a footballer. There was so much spec- um, spectacle when he was when it was around the transfer window. So I really wanted athletes to feel comfortable enough to speak to uh, my platform and just really get the message across. So today I announced the partnership that I um, started with House of Marley, which is a headphone company, um, which is there in partnership with Bob Marley's family, which is incredible. Um, So they are basically wanting me to write articles for them around music and being an athlete. So that's just one of the partnerships that um, I've already sort of got with Three Point Start. But I just really wanted to get other people involved, get other athletes to write content um, and, and create a platform where we could share our own truths. Amazing. And can you share with us how you created Three Point Start, like the support that you had and how you got involved with that network as well? Yep. So I got a email um, just in luck, just before lockdown, asking if I wanted to join something called the Women's Sports Trust. And this is like a, um, it's, I think it's a non-for-profit or a charity, I'm not sure. Um, but the whole point of it is to really empower female athletes because female athletes are often maybe overlooked, underfunded, just because we're maybe not um, selling as much t-shirts or not as on TV as much um, as the male uh, male counterparts. Luckily in athletics, it's pretty equal, but I know across other sports, it's not. So it's a really great um, organization. But through that, we got uh, mentors. So um, I got a mentor who basically made the BBC Sport website. Um, So if he was going to be somebody to ask, how do I make a vlog? It was going to be him. So I kind of ran ideas past him. And whilst doing that, I was also part of another cohort um, called Livewire Sport, which is like a sports marketing agency that which works with Premier League. Um, so again, I ran it past them and I kind of got loads of help, loads of advice. And that's what kind of motivated me to, to make the website. So it wasn't a, even though I did create it on my own and figured out how to do all the code and all the graphics, logos, everything, um, I really got a good help and push from, from the team there. Yeah, that is so good. And again, I'm all about team. Every time I I talk about my performances and any successes that I have, it's always with a shout out to the team. Yes, of course, it's the work, the grind, the research that you're doing, but also it's like you get that extra impetus and that extra push from those people who've gone before, gone ahead of you, who've created that space, who can give you that advice and give you that nudge in the right direction so you're probably hopefully making less failures because you're getting to run things by them first so I I, I'm all for that (laughs) and just as a final I appreciate that in the past you have potentially been critiqued around or you have been critiqued around your management of like social media and performance or just your engagement in this creative side of who you are whilst trying to perform what do you say to that now I think I you know I've I've really learned how to have a good balance but I think there's sort of an old school mentality when it does come to social media because social media you can recover and be on social media as you are actually not moving (laughs) when you're on your phone so the the idea that there's a correlation (laughs) between social media and performance you know I think it's just maybe a more old old school um, mindset, which I I do disagree with. Um, But I do say that it's all about managing your time, managing your energy. If I'm leading up to a competition, I'm not gonna be writing 10 articles and working and collaborating with loads of brands that week. And I'm very honest and transparent with the brands 
um, I work with and also the timeline that I can sort of produce content. Um, so I think it's really important to know yourself and know when are you at your best um, for both athletics and both the things you're doing away from the track. So as long as you're managing that, um, I think it's a completely fine to balance um, social media presence and uh, athletic performance. Absolutely. I just love that what you're saying. You're very upfront. Basically, you're setting expectations. You're establishing the boundaries, the framework for when you're going to be able to work and when you're not going to be able to produce that same level of content. Has there been a time when you've not quite got it right, where you've not quite hit that balance uh, well? Um, maybe when it comes to training, like there can be times when I could be late to training because I was finishing up a blog. So that's my like sort of time management not being great. So I think it's sometimes really prioritizing and it can be hard sometimes because training can be grueling and being online can be exciting. So it's really knowing, you know, what do I really need to prioritize at this time? So if Wednesday I need to train, I need to know that, okay, I need to finish up by five o'clock so I can do this, do this and get to training. So I think for me, the times I've not got it right, got it right is when I've been too excited about the things I'm doing online and not prioritize training. But that's something of the past. And definitely since lockdown where I had no training, I realized how much I missed it, how much I valued it. Um, so since, um, since 2021, I've been really committed. <laughs> I'm being honest, since 2021, I've really committed to um, my training and being an athlete as well as everything I'm doing away from the track. Oh, I love that. Thank you so, so much. To wrap things up, can you share with me your aspirations as an athlete going into the 2022 season and beyond? I'd love for people to hear it here first. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then I'm going to do like two quick fire questions. Okay. Yep. So my aims for this year athletics wise is to get a medal at the home Commonwealth Games in Birmingham and to make the top eight at the world championships. Um, if I can do more than that, that would be amazing. But they're my goals that I've sort of set for this year. And also to, um, I'd like to challenge for a medal at Europeans as well. I'd like to challenge for a medal at all of them, but I'm very realistic with the way that I set my goals. So that they're my goals for the, for the year. Very exciting. <laughs> Finally, how do you, of course, define your success as the name of the game, name of the podcast? So how do you define your success? Um, I think for me now, success is doing what makes me happy and being true to myself. Yeah. Oh, wow. You've defined that really succinctly, but could you define it even more succinctly in <laughs> three words? Um, truth. Um, peace. And fulfillment. Love it. Thank you so, so much, Naomi Metzger, for coming on this podcast. I've learned so much. I'm really excited to share this with the world. <laughs> and I hope that you've enjoyed listening to this. Please share your feedback. Please share this with other people. It's going to be so inspirational and educational. And I'll see you at training soon. Yes. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>